Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a war. The war between alternating current and Nikola Tesla and direct current and Thomas Edison. That's right, in the 1880s and the 1890s, there was an all-out battle between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla about which type of current should be powering the homes of the world. In the end, that was won by Nikola Tesla and his company, the Westinghouse Company, and AC came out on top for now. Before we get into that, we're going to look at exactly what direct current and alternating current is. In direct current, the electrons flow around the circuit from the negative terminal to the positive terminal in one direction, constantly the same way. Before they reach a resistive load in the circuit, the electrons have more energy, and after they've transferred energy to, for example, a bulb, they will have less energy on this side of the circuit. Direct current, electrons flow in one direction only. Okay, so alternating current. Alternating current means that the direction of the current is constantly changing. In fact, it changes 50 times every single second. So we can say that it has a frequency of 50 hertz. In moving backwards and forwards 50 times every second, the electrons bump into one another and pass on the electrical energy along the circuit and back to the power station. This is a bit like a game of tag or a game of dominoes where you push one and the, the rest all tumble. So even though the electrons aren't flowing in one direction, they can still pass on electrical energy this way. The national grid uses alternating current to distribute electricity around the country. And using this system, we can increase the voltage up to 400,000 volts with a transformer. And I did a little video on transformers, which should be appearing up there now. So with an alternating current, we also get an alternating potential difference, a changing potential difference in the circuit. In the UK, the maximum positive voltage is 325 volts and the maximum negative voltage is minus 325 volts. We call that the peak voltage. And on average, across the whole time, this averages out to be a mean of 230 volts. So we say that the alternating current in this country has like a direct current equivalent of being 230 volts. Sometimes it's more than that, sometimes that it's less than that, but that's on average. Now, you may have already spotted that with alternating current, there are actually times here where the potential difference of voltage moves through zero as it goes from positive to negative and negative to positive. So there are actually times when there is no current flow at all and the circuit is effectively off. But bear in mind, the current goes through one full cycle from positive to negative 50 times every second. That means that it happens so quickly that we don't even notice. Unless that is that you're watching a slow motion video, you may notice that the lights appear to flicker in the room. And that's because you can now see this change between positive and negative. And if you look at this video of me in my science lab, you'll see that because it's a slow motion video, you can see the points where the potential difference is zero and therefore the current is off and you can see the lights flicker as a result. Okay, so back to the war of currents, who actually won? In order to transmit electricity over long distances, direct current pioneered by Thomas Edison wasn't good enough. You had to be within a mile of a power station, otherwise the electricity wouldn't reach you because of the energy losses, the resistance heating up the circuit. And another thing is, that you had to be on a fixed voltage. You can't change the voltage with a direct current. If you've got 12 volts at the battery, you've got a maximum of 12 volts across the light bulb that you want to light up. So direct current was no good for long distance electricity transmission. And also you couldn't really power anything other than light bulbs on it. 
With alternating current and the use of transformers, as pioneered by Nikola Tesla, you can ramp up the voltage to 400,000 volts in some places, and with a higher voltage, the current is lower for the same amount of power. With a lower current comes less heating effect due to resistance, and therefore the alternating current circuit is much more energy efficient particularly over long distances. So the war of the currents was won by Nikola Tesla and alternating current. And national grids, most national grids across the world, use alternating current to deliver electricity from the power stations to your homes for now. It might not always be the case. As we include more and more renewable energy on the grid, we're finding that high voltage direct current could now have a place again, particularly because you can change the power of direct current as you go much more easily than you can with alternating current. It's also very difficult to get different grids to connect together in alternating current because they have to be exactly the same frequency. And that is something that's quite hard to do. Fortunately for you, you don't have to remember all these details, although it is fascinating. There is even a film released about it in 2017 called The Current Wars, and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch, and he's kind of a big deal, I've heard. You need to remember the facts about direct current and alternating current, including what mains frequency, 50 hertz is, and mains voltage, which is 230 volts for your exams. If you can nail that, I'm sure you'll be fine. Take it easy. So, yes, me again. I forgot to mention when I was talking about Edison and his quest for direct current, in order to try and disprove alternating current, he hooked up an elephant to an alternating current supply and electrocuted it to try and prove that, electri uh, that alternating current is really dangerous. Well, in actual fact, if he'd have hooked him up to the same supply of direct current, it probably would have killed the elephant too. So in summary, he is not the messiah. He's a very naughty boy.